Hi, and thanks for choosing Easy Robot. You're only a few minutes away from getting to the fun stuff, but before we get there, there's a few critical things we need to run through to ensure that you have a smooth running robotics class. Each of these robots produces its own unique Wi-Fi signal. If you're working with a group of people to help build these robots, you'll need to run through this next step one robot at a time. The first thing that you'll want to do is turn on your robot and connect to it the same way that you would to any Wi-Fi signal or hotspot. Find the one labeled EZB followed by a unique four-digit code. Now imagine if we had turned on five or fifteen of these robots at one time. We'd have no way of knowing which code belonged to which robot. To eliminate this problem for your students, use a felt marker to write the last four digits of the Wi-Fi identifier on your robot near the power switch. If you don't want to write directly on your robot, you can use a sticker. Once completed, turn the robot off and repeat this step for each of the robots. This will help your students to connect to the right robot each time they work with them in the future. It's also a good idea to number each of your robots. I would do this in a larger number near the four digit code. It's important that no two robots of the same model type have the same number. For example, there should only be one hexapod with the number one. Now the last thing that we need to do before using our robots is to create a unique servo profile for each individual robot. When looking at robots of the same model type, you're going to notice that they look very similar, but there's actually slight variations between how the servos are aligned. And what this does is it creates a unique posture for each individual robot. Because we want all of our robots to be the same, we have to adjust those servos slightly to put them into a uniform posture. What this does is it will protect the servos, allow for optimal performance and consistency. And the good news is it only takes a few minutes. To begin, turn your robot on and connect your computer to it. Then open the Easy Builder software. I've pinned mine to the taskbar to make it easy to locate. We'll skip the online tutorials. They're good to read, but we'll move past them for now. We'll then open an example project for the type of robot we're working with. The software will ask you if you want to open the assembly instructions. We can close that window. The next screen that we'll see would typically allow us to load a servo profile or to create a new one. Since we haven't yet created any, click Create Servo Profile. So now we're ready to connect our software to the robot. Earlier we had connected the computer to the robot via Wi-Fi, and now we're going to identify that with the software. And what you need to know is before you do that, the robot will spring to life when that happens. So you have to make sure he has ample room around him so he's not going to fall onto the floor and get broken. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. When looking at the servo fine-tune window, you'll want to pay attention to the robot's alignment on the screen. And what you'll notice is that the top of his head is pointing towards the top of the screen. And when you're doing the alignment, you want to make sure that you're holding the robot the same way, and that can help you to get oriented. Also on this screen, you'll notice there's 12 boxes with a minus and a plus symbol. These boxes each refer to one servo on the robot. So what I want you to do is just take one box and go ahead and hit the minus and the plus buttons and watch how your robot will adjust itself in real time. So the goal with fine-tuning the servos is to have each of the black servo motors line up with the white brackets. We want them to form a nice straight line and to not have any kinks in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the servo in the 1 o'clock position and then we're going to move counterclockwise around until we've done the entire inner circle. And then we'll go around and we'll do the outer circle. So let's start with this one here. This guy actually is pretty well aligned. So I'm just going through. I just did the uh, 11 o'clock. Now I'm doing the 9 o'clock servo. Once you get accustomed to it, this process will usually only take a couple minutes per robot. And what you can see here is we've now got the inside circle totally done. So we're going to move to the outside circle now. And again, what the goal is is to line up the black servo motor with the white bracket. When I'm adjusting the outside servos, I like to have the robot in my left hand and use my right hand, and that way I can see the white side of the bracket line up, and I find that's a little bit easier for me to tell if it's in, in a straight line. And that looks like it's got it. 
So with the hexapod, there's no servos for the neck or the head, so this guy is done. All right, let's go ahead and save this. And now what you're going to want to do when you're naming your servo profile is to make sure that you include the robot type as well as the number that we wrote on the underside earlier. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow your students later to match up each individual robot with its exact right servo profile. So in this guy's case, he's hexapod 1. All right, and we'll save that. And this guy's now good to go, so we'll put him over here. Tuning the humanoid is very similar to the hexapod in that we want the servos to all be aligned straight with the bracket. The only real difference is that the humanoid has grippers and feet that we have to align. So let's get started by turning him on and connecting him to our computer. Look for the EZB on the Wi-Fi list. We'll launch our software. Skip the tutorial, and we're going to open the example project for the humanoid. We'll skip the assembly instructions, and this time when we see the servo fine-tune window, you're going to notice that it says hexapod 1, which is the servo profile for the hexapod that we just created. But we want to make one for this particular humanoid, so let's hit the create button. The next thing we're going to do is connect to the robot, and he will jump here again as well, so be ready for that. And immediately what you're going to notice here with this one in particular is that his feet are fairly different from each other. And so we're going to try to bring those into alignment so that his legs are straight up and down and his feet are parallel across the bottom. So the first thing we're going to adjust is his leg. And you can notice that the brackets here kind of go out and like this. And so we're going to want to adjust the top bracket first. Then we're going to want to adjust the bottom bracket. And I've actually got my left eye closed while I'm calibrating, and I find that sometimes that helps me to align it a little bit faster. And now we've got a nice straight line on these servos. So we're going to flip them over and do the other side. Same as we did in the last side. Do one more. And this one looks pretty good. So you can now see that his legs are actually flush in the front and lining up parallel pretty nicely. So that's pretty good. But you'll notice that his feet here are still pretty crooked. And if we put him down, we can hear he's still making a buzz and he's not very well balanced. So what we want to do is align the bottom of the foot to be parallel with the top of this bracket here at his knees. I'm going to start with his right foot. And we're going to go over to his left foot. And now you can see that those are pretty straight. So we can put him down on the counter, and now we can hear that there's no servo noise, and we can see that his feet are lined nicely parallel to the bottom. So now that we've got the feet looking good, the next thing to do is the arms. And the goal here is going to be to have the arms be nice and straight in a line, and you can see that's a little bit crooked right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust first his shoulder servo, which is actually located in his chest, and we're just going to bring it so that it tilts forward a little bit, because we want the front of this bracket here to align with the front of his chest plate here. Okay, so now we've got a nice straight line here. And now we're going to work on making these two servos straight. We'll start with this one and then we'll adjust that one. And we're just, this one looks pretty good. We're just going to make a slight adjustment to this one here to straighten that out a little bit. And now we're going to take a look at his hand. And this gripper we want to be just about the width of a credit card, so we're going to adjust that one. We want to be careful not to over-tighten the gripper because that can cause damage to the servo. And if we do over-tighten it, it's going to sound like this. And when it sounds like that, we have about 20 seconds to make it not sound like that and to release the pressure on the servo to avoid any damage. So now let's look at the other side, and again, we're going to start with the shoulder bracket here, and we're going to try to align the first bracket with the front of the chest, which is now pretty well aligned. Then we're going to look at it from on top, and you can see that the arm is bent out there. So we're going to make some adjustments there. And that one looks pretty close. We'll go like that. And that's pretty good there. 
So you can see now that the, his top arms are pretty much a straight line as well. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust this last gripper. And now we've got his arms complete and his legs as well. All that remains is his neck and his head. So with the neck, what we're going to try to do is align the front of this bracket again with the front of his chest. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to make his head tilt forward slightly. And that gives us a pretty good lineup. And to align his head, we want to make sure that he's looking forward. And so I align the bridge of his nose with the middle of the bracket in his chest. And there we go, we've got them all done. Now we just need to save our servo profile as humanoid one, and it's good to go. When fine tuning the rover servos, you'll find it's very similar to the other two robots that we've already done. So let's get started. We'll power it up, connect to it, Launch the software. Again, we'll skip the tutorials. We'll open the example projects, and this time we'll choose the rover. And again, we'll skip the assembly instructions because we've already done that part. When looking at the servo fine tune window, you're going to see that we already have the hexapod and the humanoid that we've already created. But we don't have this particular rover, so let's go ahead and create a servo profile for him. And let's connect to the EZB. Now what you'll find with the rover is because his arms are out forward, sometimes you will get a buzz off of the shoulder servos. It's nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and align him and then we'll put him into a resting position and that'll get his arms to relax. So the first servo we're going to adjust is going to be his right shoulder servo. And what we're looking to do here is have the servo be parallel with this little ridge on the side of the rover. So we'll just turn it a little bit sideways so we can get a better look at it here and bring it up there and I think that's got it. Next up, we're going to adjust this servo here and that looks like that's going to need about five or six degrees maybe. Now that one looks pretty straight. And then we'll get this front servo. So this right arm looks pretty good now. And what we're going to do is we're going to now adjust the gripper. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the humanoid, which is to close it so it's just about the width of a credit card in between there. And that looks great. Now we'll go across and do his left arm. Let's get the wires out of the way here. Same thing again. We're going to start with his shoulder servo. And now we got that guy, so we'll do his next servo up. Next, we're going to get this third servo on his left arm. And that looks pretty good. So now this arm is done. And if we look at this gripper, it looks like it's pretty good already. So I don't think we need to do any adjustment there. All we really have left is the neck and the head. And when I'm doing the next servo, I like to try and use the white side because I find it's a little bit easier to line up. So we'll just bring that back a few degrees and that's looking good. And much like the humanoid, we just want to make sure the head is looking straight forward. Then that just needs a few degrees, and that looks like that's pretty good. All that remains now is to save the file. And we'll just save this file as Rover 1. And we are done. That's it. Your robot should all be calibrated now and ready to use. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you have a great time learning and playing with your easy robots.